Hello biologists, lovely to see you all. Um, this is the best way I could think of, of getting the lessons that we usually have in the classroom to you. As you can see, I've jazzed up my slides a little bit. Any vital information that is directly linked to the GCSE specification will be in red. Anything that is additional information or interesting uh, will be in black. These might be AO3 exam question contexts where you take the knowledge you have and apply it to a new situation. Anything beyond the spec will be in italics. This might be A level or beyond. It's just something for you to take your learning further because something tells me we're going to have a lot more scientists in the future doing research. Uh, down the left hand side you've got our key questions. These are directly linked to the text. It just allows you to um, test your brain as we're going through. You might want to make a note of them in your own margin. So the format of our lesson will always be, I'm going to give you the content you need first, looking after your brain health, making sure you have all the information you need to be successful in this area of science. We'll have a starter and a title. We'll have the content and some cumulative quizzing as we go through, just to make sure that your brain is nice and awake as we go through the lesson. There'll be some exam question practice. Uh, these will all be AQA exam questions and the answers. Then we'll have a plenary and some opportunities for extended learning so you can take your knowledge that step further. After that, we are going to look after our physical health. Today, we are going to do some high intensity interval training. Uh, so you might want to get some water ready, comfortable clothes, maybe some trainers, and let the people in your household know it may be a little bit noisy whilst you're doing all the jumping and the getting up and getting down, and I'll explain when we get to it. Uh, last five minutes, we're going to be looking after our mental health, a little bit of mindfulness. Um, one of the tricky things about this new situation is it is very unknown. It is okay to not be okay, but we need to make sure that we are looking after our mental health um, so we are as resilient as possible for getting through this kind of challenging time, really. Um, so just five minutes of a nice activity just to give your brain a bit of a rest and relaxation. So... Lesson seven, we're looking at aerobic respiration. The last time we were in the lab, we were looking at uh, energy demands. And before that, we were looking at photosynthesis. Can you remember for these two fundamental biological processes, what the word equations are? We've got four equations here. We've got a little diagram to help you. Which two are the ones we're after? Which one is respiration? Which one is photosynthesis? So the top, uh, sorry, not the top, the second equation is respiration. Glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide and water. And equation number four is photosynthesis. It is the opposite. Water plus carbon dioxide gives us oxygen and glucose. And we looked at this as a fundamental way of storing the energy that comes from our awesome star and locking it up into little glucose molecules. Then these little glucose molecules can be used by a wide range of organisms to release that energy for their processes that they need to do to live. Um, so this lesson, we are going to describe aerobic respiration in detail. We're going to list the uses of the energy uh, that is released. So all of these fundamental processes um, that mean things are alive and things are living. Uh, we're going to represent it as a word equation, which we've already done, but take it a step further and represent it as a balanced chemical equation as well. This might be a skill that you can do already. Um, we are going to explain two ways of measuring the rate of respiration as well. So, a bit of a recap. Um, respiration is one of our fundamental biological processes. Respiration and photosynthesis deal with um, storing energy and releasing energy. And without both of these processes, life on Earth could not exist. Respiration, like photosynthesis, occurs inside your cells in your body. Not every single cell in your body, but inside most cells in your body. It also occurs inside plant cells as well. Every living cell, well no, not every living cell, most living cells will have mitochondria inside. Mitochondria is where respiration occurs. They are fabulous little um, subcellular organs <laughs> or organelles um, that are responsible for splitting those glucose molecules and releasing that energy. Um, mitochondria is the plural, one mitochondrion. Um, 
cells. One type of cells that doesn't have mitochondria are red blood cells and this is because their job mostly is to just carry oxygen to your body cells where it's needed. Carry oxygen through the bloodstream for respiration. So to maximize the amount of oxygen they can carry they've got rid of um, kind of subcellular organs that they don't need. They don't have a nucleus to make more room, they don't have mitochondria to make more room. They are a very efficient cell when it comes to being able to carry as much oxygen as possible. Uh, if you're interested in the structure of red blood cells and haemoglobin, the protein that binds to these oxygen molecules, um, feel free to have a little look. Uh, haemoglobin is awesome. Um, so, oh! <laughs> Just as a little recap, before we go any further, can you remember how to draw an animal cell? Can you remember how to draw a plant cell? We've said mitochondria are present in both. Can you remember what other subcellular organs are present in animal and plant cells? With animal cells at key stage three, we said there were just three. At GCSE, we added two more. Uh, one of them is too small to be seen with a light microscope though. A couple of hints there. With plant cells, we've got three additional subcellular organs that we would need to draw. Um, with animal cells, they're very squidgy. With plant cells, they have a rigid um, structure to them. Something is there for structure and support. So have a think what might be needed in plant cells. With plant cells, we've got um, the ability to photosynthesize also. So what have they got in addition to animal cells that allows them to photosynthesize? They will also need something to help maintain pressure in that cell. Uh, think about what organ, subcellular organ, they might need for that. Okay, hopefully your diagrams look something like this. You've got the cytoplasm in both. This is where um, most chemical, well, most chemical, re chemical reactions occur in the cell. Um, we've got uh, the nucleus, which is where DNA is stored, and the nucleus controls the activities of the cell. The cell membrane controls what substances pass in and out of the cell. It doesn't allow them, it doesn't, um, you know, kind of let them, none, none of those fluffy words that we use, it controls what enters and what exits the cells. With plant cells, this side, <laughs> you've also got a cell wall. This is made of cellulose. This is the stuff we can't digest. We don't have the enzyme to digest cellulose. Cows do, which is why they eat grass, but humans can't digest cellulose. Uh, this gives the plant cells structure and support. support. This is why plants are crunchy. Um, Humans, we are not crunchy, we do not have cell walls. Um, so, we've got um, some, uh, yeah, cell wall for structure and support. Uh, just below that are mitochondria, or singular mitochondrion. We can see these using light microscopes. They are just about big enough. Uh, belief, uh, that. <laughs> beneath mitochondrion, we've got a vacuole. This is filled with cell sap and it helps maintain pressure in the plant cell. Uh, below that are vital subcellular organs for photosynthesis. We've got chloroplasts. Inside the chloroplast is an amazing pigment called chlorophyll. A pigment is a, um, a molecule with colour and chloroplasts um, are green because they are filled with this lovely green chlorophyll. Um, these are most of our subcellular organs, when you get to A-level, you'll find out that at the moment I'm lying a little bit, but science is all about choosing the most appropriate model for the level of study. At key stage three, we didn't talk about mitochondria because it wasn't an appropriate level of study. But as you go to A-level, you'll find out there are more and more subcellular organs doing amazing jobs inside the cell. The one you do need to know about at GCSE, which isn't listed here, are ribosomes. Ribosomes are responsible for building proteins from amino acids. So if you want to put in brackets next to your diagrams, ribosomes, responsible for building proteins from amino acids, feel free. But the reason they're not on this diagram is because they are too small to see with a light microscope. So, animal cells will require more mitochondria 
than plant cells. And this is because animals are much more mobile. Uh, some animals are warm-blooded. Our energy demands are much, much higher than plants, which is static. They, are, they definitely don't have to um, keep themselves at certain temperatures so the enzymes inside them work. With humans, we, we have an optimum temperature. We have a temperature where our enzymes work the best at. And our body needs to maintain that internal temperature. And mitochondria, are a very important part of being able to maintain the body's temperature. Um, different animal cells within one organism will have different numbers of mitochondria. Muscle cells, for example, have really, really high numbers of mitochondria because they need to be able to release an awful lot of energy um, for muscles to be able to contract. And you might notice that when you contract your muscles a lot, when you do exercise, there is lots and lots of heat. There's lots of warmth. And this is because respiration is an exothermic reaction. It releases energy. Uh, if you want to go a little bit further, uh, because at GCSE we just say it releases energy. Uh, we don't talk about the currency of this energy. ATP is the molecule uh, which is kind of considered energy currency. Um, if you want to go into a bit more detail and have a look at what ATP is, feel free. There are some beautiful biochemical uh, cycles uh, involved in making ATP. So have a look. Um, at GCSE though, feel free to have a look. If it doesn't make any sense, don't worry, come straight back. Um, so we've said movement is one use of energy. I gave you a hint with a second use. How many more can you think of? Uses of energy that is released in respiration. Pause the video, have a think. Okay, I've color coded these uh, depending on uh, what level of study we're at. So at GCSE, movement, chemical reactions to build larger molecules and warmth are the three listed uses of energy released in respiration. But we also know from our study at GCSE that energy is used in active transport, moving those ions against concentration gradients in the roots, moving glucose from a low concentration in the small intestine to a high concentration in blood. Active transport of molecules is something that also uses energy. And we also know that growth uses energy. Mitosis is going to use energy. Um, so even though we've only got three official listed ones, there are kind of two secret ones that we talk about as we're going through GCSE. So the three in bright green are listed on the spec. The two in dark green are kind of referenced as we go through biology, but not specifically listed. And then we've got two really exciting ones. These are definitely A-level. Um, bioluminescence is an amazing phenomenon, phenomenon uh, where um, living organisms can emit light. Think of like fireflies or think of um, deep down in deepest, darkest trenches in the ocean, uh, fish that can glow in the dark or not glow in the dark, they can emit their own light, they're not glowing, they're emitting the light. Um, this is a, an amazing use of the energy released in respiration. Um, below that, um, when we talk about nerves, when we get on to um, homeostasis and response, um, we will talk about nerve impulses. But to allow that nerve impulse to happen, an awful lot of work has to go into creating something called an action potential. If you want to look at that in more detail, that's definitely A-level. So bioluminescence and nerve transmission, two lovely A-level topics that you can look into. I've put a link to Biology um, Ninja there, um, which has got a really, really lovely mnemonic for the A-level biology um, uses of glucose but the mnemonic for the GCSE ones is muck wag movement chemical reactions to build larger molecules warmth active transport and growth five possible uses so here is a chance for some cumulative quizzing we've got two questions here state where respiration occurs two marks though so I don't just want to know 
where in the body and I don't just want to know the subcellular organ I want to know both give three uses of energy from respiration we've talked about McWag you can give the three standard ones or you can get a little bit creative and give the alternates and the answers so inside cells for one point uh, one marking point and in the mitochondria for the second marking point if it was just a one mark question they might just ask you for mitochondria um, but as it's a two mark question we want to say explicitly where the mitochondria are uh, three uses of energy from respiration one mark each movement chemical reactions to build bigger molecules and warmth we could also have um, active transport or growth if you're being really fancy and you're talking about bioluminescence it's a bit of a risky mark at GCSE I don't know if they'd give it to you it's better to just play it safe um so warmth is a really interesting point um we've said that respiration is an exothermic reaction and there's only like a couple of scenarios where your body will actively do more to warm you up. One is where your body temperature dips rather low and you start shivering and that fast contraction of the muscles uh, causes them to use more glucose for respiration and then you've got that warmth um, kind of being generated as a result of that, um, that reaction. Um, there's the phone. Um, this energy <laughs> is released as thermal energy. Come on, Mum. Ah, she got it. <laughs> um, linking to chemistry, though, um, this is a skill from the fifth chemistry module, being able to calculate bond energies and proving that reactions are exothermic or endothermic. So what I found, that way, is a lovely glucose molecule. One molecule of glucose needs six molecules of oxygen to react with it. Six molecules of O2. We can see the double bond in between them there. Two oxygens. That gives us the products of this reaction are six molecules of H2O and six molecules of carbon dioxide. So if we were to prove that this is exothermic, this is how we'd go about it. Now, when I'm calculating bond energies and the energy in from the bonds that are broken and the energy out from the bonds that are made, I prefer to put them into tables. And this just helps me to organise my maths. Um, so the table on the far left is the table for the glucose molecule and for the oxygen molecules. The table just here is for the water molecules and for the carbon dioxide molecules. And what we're going to do is count up how many of these bonds are in each molecule. So for example, for water, which is H2O, there are two red OH bonds and we've got six molecules of water in total. So we would work out how many bonds in total what amount of energy is in those bonds. So, first of all, counting up the bonds. If you want to pause and have a go, feel free. So, the number of, en <laughs> the number of bonds, sorry, I was just trying to figure out why my table disappeared, and it's because I've, I've, uh, I've written it in these little tables here. So, uh, I'm, I'm, ahead of where I thought it was. So the number of bonds. We've got four blue CH bonds, carbon hydrogen bonds. We've got, oh, sorry, no, we don't, I'm lying. We've got seven CH bonds, uh, seven carbon hydrogen bonds. We've got seven carbon oxygen bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Uh, we've got five oxygen hydrogen bonds I'm talking about this big glucose molecule over here and we've got five carbon carbon bonds the black CC bonds now in the oxygen we said that we've got one oxygen oxygen double bond but there are six molecules in total so what I've done down there is six which is one bond 
times six molecules. And then all I did was times those numbers together. So the bond energy times the number of bonds. And this gives us the total energy in those bonds in that molecule. Adding all of that together will give us the total energy in, the number of bonds broken. That is one side of the reaction. For the products, I've done exactly the same. We've got two OH bonds, two red OH bonds in water, but we've got six water molecules. So two times six, just up here, is 12. Here, we've got two carbon oxygen double bonds in each molecule. Two times six gives us 12. And then times in 12 by 187 and 12 by 110 gives us our total energy here. So now all we need to do is add the total energy together for both sides. We have the energy in 2,878, the energy out 3,564. So, to calculate the overall energy transfer, we do energy out minus energy in, 3,564 uh, 3, minus 2,876 gives us 686. As this is a positive value, not a negative value, this proves that our reaction is exothermic. So this is a lovely way that your chemistry links to biology. We said that respiration is exothermic, we've used chemistry to prove it. Um, respiration is an exothermic reaction, photosynthesis the opposite, we've got a lovely little arrow saying we can go this way too, and photosynthesis is exactly this equation flipped the other way around. Um, photosynthesis the opposite um, should be an endothermic reaction. Can you use bond energies? Well, you've done all the hard maths anyway. Can you use this to prove that photosynthesis is endothermic? Um, if you would like to have a look at this example, um, this is the website I gave it from. They've got a different way of working it out there, not using tables, but using the diagrams on the sheet. Feel free to have a look at another way of working it out. But anyway, let's get back to the biology. Um, aerobic respiration, uh, we said when we were in the lab, is respiration using oxygen. It's when there is sufficient oxygen available. So this molecule of glucose with six oxygens can break down into carbon dioxide and water. Um, I'm giving you hints already. This is our symbol equation for the reaction. So the symbol for glucose, this is something you need to remember, is C6H12O6. If you want a diagram of what it looks like, it's right here, right there, from our maths example. Count them up. There are six carbons. There are 12 hydrogens. There are six oxygens. Feel free to count them. That is what glucose looks like. So Oxygen is a diatomic molecule. That means it travels around in a pair. It's not just one oxygen on its own, two oxygen molecules together, di meaning two, atomic meaning atoms, two atoms. Carbon dioxide, CO2 and water, H2O, these are all our very familiar chemical formulas for these substances. So the trickier part is when we need to balance them. So we could just use our numbers from our previous example, or we can work through step by step in balancing this equation. Um, I'm going to show you my approach for doing this. Uh, your approach might be slightly different. Some people can just look at that equation and go, yep, I know how to balance that. Some people work through step by step. So the first thing I do when I'm working through balancing an equation is I draw a line down the middle. And this just reminds me that every single atom on the side of the reactants on the left hand side is going to be present on the right hand side. We can't break physics, we can't lose an atom, we can't gain atoms. Every single atom has to be accounted for. So if we've got six atoms of carbon on the side of the reactants, we're going to have six atoms of carbon on the side of the products. And this is our starting point. 
My tip is to always start with the biggest molecule on the left hand side. Our biggest molecule is glucose. So six carbons on the side of the reactants. We need to have six carbons on the side of the products. Now this will change the number of oxygens in total and that's okay. Oxygen is tricky when it comes to balancing equations because as you can see it appears blooming everywhere. We've got oxygens attached to the hydrogens in water, we've got oxygens attached to the carbons in carbon dioxide, we've got oxygen on its own as a molecule and we've got it in the glucose. So my advice for balancing equations is always leave oxygen till the end. So we've got our carbons ba balanced. We've got six on the side of the reactants, six on the side of the products. Let's move on to our next atom. Hydrogen. We've got 12 on the side of the products. Ah, lies <laughs> on the side of the reactants. And over here on the side of the products, we've only got two. Now, one skill for balancing equation is, equations is realising that you can't just make up brand new molecules. You can't stick extra hydrogens on water because then it's no longer water. All you can do is multiply it. And you can double it, triple it, quadruple it, quintuple it, six, no, double it, triple it, quadruple it, quintuple it, sextuple it. Maybe, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but we can multiply this single molecule of water by one, two, three, four, five, or six, typically at GCSE, it doesn't tend to go beyond six. Typically at GCSE, it's either gonna be doubling, tripling, or quadrupling. Uh, but for respiration and photosynthesis, it is a special kind of example. So we've got, here we go, two hydrogens here. What do we need to multiply it by to get to 12? Two times hmm, makes 12. Six, sure. Two times six makes 12. This means that over here, we've got six, high, uh, six molecules of water. Each molecule has two hydrogens in. Six times two gives us 12. We've got 12 over there as well. This is so confusing. I don't know which hand is which. Um, Okay, so we've balanced our carbon, we've balanced our hydrogen, now we get to the trickier part of balancing our oxygen. So let's start with where our reaction is complete. We've still got gaps over on the side of the reactants, but over here on the products, we've got multipliers in front of each of our molecules. So if we work on this basis, so over here, with the carbon dioxide. We've got six molecules where there are two oxygens in there. So instead of just two, we've got, times it by six, we've got 12 molecules of oxygen in total in that carbon dioxide. Over here in this water, there's just one oxygen, but we've got six molecules. So in total, we've got six oxygens here in this molecule. Six plus 12, gives us 18. Over on the side of the products, we've got 18 molecules of water in total. So this means that on the side of the reactants, there has to be 18 in total. Now we can see where six of them are really easily. There are six in a molecule of glucose. And ideally we don't want to start multiplying this molecule of glucose because we've multiplied these guys by six and then we'll end up in this kind of crazy seesaw balancing act uh, and it's just not worth it. So let's try and leave that big molecule as it is. What can we do with that little molecule of O2? So if we've got six molecules of our 18 allocated to our glucose, how many molecules have we got, uh, how many oxygens have we got left to play with? Well, 12 plus 6 gives us 18. So if we've got 12 oxygen molecules in this kind of like little O2 bracket, that's not very well explained, um, but if we need to account for 12 molecules of oxygen and they're all O2, what can we times by 2 to give us 12? 6. 
So this is where our lovely balanced equation comes from, just a bit of seesaw practice. We don't need to multiply the glucose by anything, it can just stay as it is. So this is our final balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. You can balance it if you like, or you can just remember that it's one molecule of glucose and 666. Um, if you'd like some more practice balancing equations, uh, this website, JLab, is really, really awesome. Um, you can pick 5, 10 or 15 balancing equations and they'll give you loads of little practices like this. It's a really nice way to build that skill. So, moving on to measuring respiration. Um, so, we can either measure one of the products or one of the reactants. Um, when it comes to the products of respiration, uh, it's a lot easier to measure carbon dioxide than it is to measure water. So what we can do is we can use lime water. This is our test for carbon dioxide. Um, this setup is a really nice setup. And were we in the lab, um, we could do this as a practical. But what we've got are three test tubes. The first test tube, potassium hydroxide, is used to remove atmospheric carbon dioxide because we don't want any atmospheric carbon dioxide getting in there. We just want to know how much carbon dioxide these seeds, germinating seeds, so that means seeds that are starting to sprout, how much carbon dioxide are these germinating seeds producing? Um, with the first tube of lime water, this is a control, not a control variable, a control. It allows us to compare before and after the germinating seeds. So if in B we're getting a positive test for carbon dioxide, this means that the potassium hydroxide isn't removing all the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This mean that, means that our experiment might, may not be valid because our results could not determine exactly how quickly or how much carbon dioxide these germinating seeds are made. So it's there as a control to compare the results of our experiment to, not a control variable. Control variables are things we keep the same to make sure that our experiment produces valid results. Things like keeping this temperature the same. If we did one of these, um, one test uh, in the morning when it was really chilly and then another test in the afternoon when the lab was much warmer, um, that that's not a, a, a valid set of results because as temperature increases rate of reaction is going to increase um it could be keeping the amount of germinating seeds the same making sure that we've got the same mass i said the word amount there um amount is not acceptable as an answer use the word mass or the word volume we could keep the same volume of of uh, lime water um because if we've got huge like differences in the amount of lime water there, it might affect how long we get a colour change. The colour change when we're testing for carbon dioxide with lime water is if we've got carbon dioxide there, if it's a positive test, it goes cloudy or milky. If it's a negative test, it stays colourless. Don't write clear. Colourless is the answer we're looking for. Um, the quicker it goes cloudy, the quicker it goes milky, the faster our rate of reaction. Uh, our rate of respiration. Oh. So we can also measure the, way, the rate at which oxygen is used. This involves much more sophisticated equipment. This is a respirometer. I've never actually seen one in real life. Um, but what you've got are two compartments. One of them has a test subject in it. Um, ethics committee decide on, you know, whether or not it's ethical to imprison insects or mice or hedgehogs or anything. Um, but we've got one closed container containing a living organism. Could be a plant, could be a very small human. Uh, and one which is exactly the same um, volume and mass in another container. And these containers, this is a closed system, so no air can get in, no air can get out. These containers are linked by a manometer, uh, which is a brand new word for me. And this manometer has um, some fluid in it. So what we've got is a situation where 
as the oxygen is used in the um, side with the living organism in, the pressure will decrease and this will move the liquid towards the living creature uh, or the living organism. Um, so you can measure how quickly that liquid moves. Um, it is really, really cool. I, I kind of want one. Um, I don't know what I put in it though. He's a bit big. Um, so this is a respirometer. I've, what I've put is the link to the Edexcel Required Practical uh, Bite Size page because they've got a lot more detail on the method for this. Now this isn't an AQA Required Practical, but it might come up as an AO3 example of how you could measure the rate of respiration. Um, so yeah, a really nice piece of equipment. Um, again, in this example, uh, we've got sodium hydroxide, which removes the carbon dioxide um, in exactly the same way the potassium hydroxide did. Uh, over on that diagram, it just says CO2 absorbent. I don't know what that could be. Um, so onto some past papers. This is uh, an area where there haven't been very many questions asked on it. So we've got some specimen questions um, to look through, but because it hasn't come up very much in past papers, it may be more likely to come up in the future. I don't really know. I don't really know what's happening with exams in the future, so <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, so we've got chemical formula for glucose. Hopefully this is something that's easy to recall now. And then we've got this lovely piece of apparatus, but one slight difference. They haven't got that potassium hydroxide there to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So mm, not, not quite as precise as our equipment, I would say. Um, 1.2 asks, after 10 minutes, the lime water in flask B was cloudy, but the lime water in flask A remained colourless. Explain why. Two marks there. Um, I would like to point out, just before you have a go at this, it says specimen paper higher, but it's question one. So this would also appear on the foundation paper. Pause the video if you'd like a little bit more time. Of course, the formula for glucose is C6H12O6. This should be something that you can recall really, really easily. Um, if it's something that you're struggling to remember, make a little revision card on it and just test yourself until it's locked in there. Um, question 1.2. So atmospheric air, the air going into flask A, um, contains less carbon dioxide than exhaled air. Oops the air going into flask B, those poor little wood lice. Um, or you could say flask B contains more carbon dioxide than the air going into flask A. So flask B goes cloudy because of the carbon dioxide produced in respiration. Uh, these specimen questions are a little clunky with their language sometimes. Um, if you reckon you would have got the mark, feel free to screenshot it and email it to me and I will tell you whether or not it would be a valid marking point. Um, 1.3, flask A acts as a control in this investigation. What is the purpose of a control? It's a word beginning with C. I hope anyway. <laughs> 1.4, uh, the student repeated the investigation with no wood lice. Flask A and flask B, what would they look like? Pause the video if you want some more time. So the answer, thank goodness, <laughs> to compare. Um, or to check that no other factor or variable is influencing the result. Um, yeah, as long as you don't talk about making it a fair test or something fluffy like that, use specific language. We use controls to compare. Uh, flask A would remain colourless, no carbon dioxide produced. Flask B would also remain co colourless. If there's no organisms, there's no respiration. If there's no respiration, there's no carbon dioxide. If there's no carbon dioxide, there is no reaction and the flask remains colourless. Oh, look at that. Ignore references to clear. See? Colourless. Colourless, guys. Uh, we are on to a foundation question, but this question could appear on the higher paper with less scaffolding. So you would just need to write it rather than fill in the gaps. So complete the word equa equation for aerobic respiration. Uh, we've got blank plus oxygen makes blank plus blank. Can you remember what the reactant, the missing reactant and the products are? Pause the video if you want more time. On the left hand side, we've got glucose plus oxygen 
the right hand side carbon dioxide plus water you can have it in either order you can have water plus carbon dioxide you will still get the marks so our plenary for this lesson is to turn it into a mind map you might have a page full of beautiful notes at the moment uh, try and turn it into something a bit more visual um, if you've got some lovely examples of mind maps please feel free to email them to me and I can share them in future videos to give other students an idea of what they could do. So, if you want to take your learning further, uh, this is my new favourite website, BioNinja. Um, this, I think, is for an international baccalaureate, so it goes into a lot more detail than GCSE, but the stuff on cells is absolutely beautiful. Um, if you want to take your learning further, have a look if you just want to recap some of the early mod um, mole molecules modules there's some really good stuff there but be aware that some of it goes into more detail than you need for GCSE if you're happy to just run with your learning go and look at the whole website the best bit that I found are their summary PDFs um, on the page it's down on the right it's like over on the right hand side I think it's like resources or further learning um, but actually I can just show you Oh yeah, that's that's our. Um, I'll explain that later. So, Bio Ninja additional resources summary PDFs. Do, do, do. And here we have like so so many amazing amazing resources for pretty much the whole of the biology module. Um, so feel free to have a look there. It's pretty awesome. Um, okay, so that is the uh, looking after our brain section. We are going to look after our physical fitness now. So pause the video to make sure you're wearing something comfortable. You might want to get some water. We are going to do a little bit of hit. Okay, at this point, let the members of your household know uh, that there might be a little bit of banging or a little bit of noise. Um, you know, you, you, you don't want to annoy the people that you, you're stuck with. Uh, just give them a, a little heads up that it might be a little bit noisy. Um, but with here, that's a funny old... Oh, I think it was actually on my camera. Um, with high intensity stuff um we're going to be moving our bodies a lot more than a stretch activity so make sure that if you're on a slippery floor like this you are wearing something like trainers so you don't slip uh make sure that you've got enough room what we're going to do is <laughs> i signed myself up for this i hate cardio <laughs> we're gonna do 90 seconds of each activity we are going to do three activities then we're going to have a little bit of a rest then we're going to repeat and repeat blimey okay one minute 30 seconds i would say put some music on in the background uh, whatever your favorite track is um and yeah we'll go with that We'll get going. So I'm going to run you through the three activities we're going to do to begin with. Um, number one, hi, is um, mountain climbers. So with your hands on the floor, you're going to bring one knee up, down, one knee up, and down. If you want to increase the level of challenge, try and keep one foot on the floor each time. That is number one. I'm going to do that for a minute and a half. Number two, I'm gonna do some burpees. Uh, so I'm just gonna tilt it up a little bit and move to the back. Uh, with burpees, we're gonna put our hands on the floor, jump our feet backwards, or we're gonna step our feet backwards, jump our feet forwards, come up to standing, 
then jump up. Make sure there are no low hanging lights because uh, you don't want to hit them. So either step back, step forwards, up and jump, or jump back, jump forwards, up and jump. A minute and a half of those. I have to take my leg warmers off. Um, number three, what we are going to do is some high knees. Oh, high knees. So standing on the spot, just going to lift our legs like this for a minute and a half. If you want to increase the level of challenge, pump your arms at the same time. Okay, you guys ready for this? We've got mountain climbers, we've got burpees, we've got high knees. It's going to be fine. It's just cardio. It's just cardio. Okay. Timer. <laughs> 30 seconds. I'm just delaying because I don't want to do it. Okay, now let's go. Cool. One minute, 30 seconds. You guys ready? I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, get in position for mountain climbers. Three, two, one, go. So, thinking about respiration, at the moment, what we're doing is increasing how hard our muscles are working. Because our muscles are working harder, they are contracting, whew, they need more glucose and they need more oxygen. To respond to that increased demand, our hearts are beating faster. Blimey, this pumps more blood to our muscles. If there is more blood, there is more oxygen, there is more glucose available for more respiration, more energy is released, our muscles can contract more. Blimey, 30 seconds left. Whew. Another change during exercise is our breathing gets faster and deeper. Oh my gosh, I need a rest. Whew. This means that we can get more oxygen into our lungs, into our bloodstream, so it can be pumped round by the heart. Oh my god. Four high rate of respiration. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Why did I think this was a good idea? Why did I think this was a good idea? Did you see me at all then? Maybe not. Okay, have a bit of water. I forgot my water. Carbonated drinks are not a good idea. Okay, yeah. Leg warmers, they're going. Right. Now, this is where my friends at the gym will be saying, you shouldn't have a break in between the exercises, you should just go to the next one. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know. But I'm lazy. I've spent the last week eating chocolate. Okay, burpees. You guys ready? Minute and a half of burpees, what's wrong with me? You've got the right idea. Okay. Minute and a half of burpees. Whoops. You guys ready? Should I do them? Let's do them sideways. There we go. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Out, in, jump. Out, in, jump. I don't think I'm going to talk this time. I know I find these hard. wondering how long before I start stepping back. Thirty seconds down. One minute to go. Halfway through. 
halfway there, guys. Oh my gosh. 30 seconds left, we can do this. So yeah, uh, when you increase muscle contraction, short term, short term changes, like your heart rate increases, your breathing rate gets deeper and also increases. Luckily, this doesn't happen forever. Uh, next lesson, when we do anaerobic respiration, <laughs> look at the reason why. You guys ready for high knees? Why don't I just pick stuff I like? Why should I pick this? Okay, one minute, 30 seconds of high knees. Ready, in, three, oh, drop my head off. Two, one, go. I like to hold my own hand when I'm doing this. Knees as high as possible. This is where you really annoy anyone in the room downstairs. Pump the arms if you want to increase the level of challenge. I'm not sure I do, I just think I want to hold my own hand. Knees nice and high, 30 seconds down, one minute to go. Seconds left. you'd like to do another couple of rounds, I'd say skip the video back. Uh, you can do as many rounds as you like. Whew. Yeah, maybe, maybe five minutes activity rather than 15. Give me some feedback, what do you guys think about the activity? Whew. Um, so, end of the lesson now. Looked after our brains, looked after our bodies, sort of. Uh, let's look after our mental health. Um, so this is something to make you laugh. Um, on this Twitter link is a video of my mum's best friend falling off the stage. Um, when I'm coming up with these mindfulness tasks, it's either something that I've thought of or my mum's thought of, and she said, why don't you share this, that'll make them laugh. Um, at the end of the video, you can see my mum and my sister absolutely creased up. Um, so it's, it's quite funny. Had a look um, at poor old Martin on Tenable. Um, and then have a think of what your funniest moment is. Um, is it something that someone's managed to catch 
on film? Or is it something that's just in your brain for you to laugh at? And I, I really struggled thinking of my funniest moment because I do so many silly things on a regular basis. Nothing really stands out anymore. Um, but if I manage to think of mine, or I'm sure you guys can think of things that might have happened in Science 9, um, let me know. But thank you very much for making it to the end of the video. I'll see you guys soon. Be awesome, do awesome things.